So, in this session, we will learn the difference between health and well being. Uh, we will look at what, how, and why of well being studies. We will look at the Indian perspective of well being and factors that enhance the well being. How well being affects my life? Why we should bother about it? We should bother about uh, well being. This looks like an obvious thing, but it is important to articulate it, put it upfront that everybody likes a happy person. Nobody likes to be a sad person or a person who is suffering and whose suffering is uh, reflected in his behavior constantly. So, we have to pursue well being because it result into better interaction and relationship with our family and friends. Well being is also positively connected to employment situation. Well being is also important at workplace. Relationship at workplace, responsibility you get at workplace, success you achieve at workplace on all three aspects well being matters. Better interaction with the, so once we have better interaction with the local community, uh, we have better interaction with the surrounding and environment. So, uh, in the upcoming slide, we will look into the contribution of Ayurveda on the health and well being because that is very deeply connected with the yogic perspective. There are so many scholars, the great minds, almost all the great minds uh, who dwell into the most fundamental questions of life, they reflected on the nature and pursuit of happiness or well being. So, Democritus, yeah, he defined individual's own satisfaction with life. That means, it is very individual perspective, it is very person specific perspective. One thing can be a matter of happiness and well being for someone, same thing cannot be the source of happiness and well being for another person. Plato, the great uh, philosopher, for him happiness is the greatest satisfaction by satisfying the most intense desire. So, most intense desires are reflection of our way of being. When these are satisfied, happiness occurs in our life. Aristotle talked about eudaimonia. We discussed about eudaimonia in the previous sessions. Basically, it relates to leading life with most valued virtues. So, this kind of happiness is very different from the kind of happiness we, in, uh, we draw by enjoying good food or having very valuable and attractive clothing or having intimate uh, sexual relationships. This happiness which we draw by pursuing virtues is called eudaimonic and is different from typical emotional happiness or uh, what Aristotle called hedonic happiness. Epicurean also talked about the happiness. Their idea was not pursuing unnecessary things, enjoying what you have. So, some people connect it with the hedonistic happiness, but this is not exactly hedonic happiness. They talk about enjoying whatever you have at this moment. Stoicism is again a school of thought which was developed when the uh, when the Greek civilization was enjoying the democracy. So, people used to reflect uh, in the groups, th there used to be debates and one of the very important stream of the conversation during that time was stoicism which talks about also very similar to what Aristotle talked about virtuous road to happiness. So, then we know that first industrialization happened, then globalization happened, the market as a, a great force emerged into the society and the market force define happiness primarily in terms of the utility or in terms of the sense pleasure, which is very close to hedonistic uh, pleasure or hedonistic happiness. We have reached to that level of uh, development and reflection in the psychology that uh, recognizes flourishing as the gold stone of well being. Flourishing 
involves uh, positive emotions, positive relationships, meaning and purpose and also a sense of achievement. So, it is a concept associated with the happiness and a high level of well being. It is a uh, complete or maximum well being coupled with optimal functioning. It is a holistic and broader representation of well being comprising of intrapersonal as well as interpersonal dimensions. According to World Health Organization, health uh, is a state of complete physical, mental, social well being and not merely absence of diseases or infirmity. Health and well being are interrelated terms. Well being is more than just having good health, well being is a continuous process of being fulfilled and healthy in all aspects physical, mental, social and spiritual. Please note that WHO recognized the importance of spiritual aspect as important as physical, mental and social aspect for well being. Well being encompasses uh, all these aspects and each of us strive toward becoming fully functional person. Fully functional person, if you want to read more about it, please read the work of Carl Roser and humanistic psychologist talked about the fully functional personality. Essentially, it means my ability to be what I can be and human being are always work in progress. They can keep achieving new levels of excellence new level of autonomy, new level of mastery. So, it is a, it is being a fully functional person who is open to experience, has purpose in life, has gained environmental mastery and has positive relationship and leads an increasingly existential life. So, you can look at health and well being are about all aspect of life. These are not only related to a aspect like good food or good clothing or some limited ways. So, the fundamental questions raised in the well being literature are related to identity that is who am I, uh, related to functionality and my role in the larger organization and larger society, relationship. So, how are my relationships? How am I and when I am the in my most productive state and with all this how satisfied I am. These are the fundamental questions pursued in the well being literature. What we can conclude thus far is that human being to function well, it requires the combination of one's cognitive function, stable emotional state and good physiology. Dodge and his uh, colleague have given a beautiful perspective about well being. They looked at well being as a matter of balance. That is a balance point between individuals resources, pool and challenges. So, at one level we have resources, intrinsic resources of course, which are psychological resources, social resources and we also have physical resources, money or technical know how or my connections all that. If we look at our life and the life challenges, they are also at three level psychological challenges, social challenges and physical challenges. Am I able to do what I wish to do? Am I able to build the kind of relationship I wish to have? Am I able to carry out with harmony within? These are the basic things about physical, social and psychological challenges. So, at one hand we have challenges, on other hand we have resources. We, will, we can say that well being is attained when resources and challenges are balanced out. This seesaw represents the drive of individual to return to a set point for well being as well as individuals need for equilibrium or homeostasis. So, a state of well being is such a situation where person has the stability on various aspects and various levels of his existence. Well being has philosophical connotation, it is the continuous process. So, like if you look at the process of balance, we are 
constantly searching a balance. It is a dynamic process. Every day I have to do something to balance my resources and challenges. So, that is why it is called continuous process uh, and that is reflected in all aspect of everyday life. It is more than health and it is related to overall mind, body, soul, intellect. So, this must be understood before we go further and talk about how we can attain that well-being. 